Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Waldo and since we've installed a 5-speed Eaton Fuller manual transmission into this truck, we need to install a custom drive shaft into it, bringing it much closer to being drivable. Here it is, my 1995 GMC C3500 HD. I paid $300 for this truck, essentially saving it from being scrapped. This project has turned into a full-on resto mod, complete with a paint job and custom seats. The engine is a 24-valve 5.9 Cummins out of a Dodge Ram. The transmission is a 5-speed Eaton Fuller out of a medium-duty Freightliner. The goal is to end up with a heavy-duty truck for towing and hauling future projects. I currently have the factory drive shaft installed. It's a two-piece drive shaft, and because of the length of the drive shaft, we're going to be sticking with the two-piece configuration. The rear section of the drive shaft has a U-joint up here where it connects to the differential, and then it has a second U-joint here up front. And then up here, there's a spline slip yoke where the rear section of the drive shaft meets up with the front section. Right here in the middle of the vehicle, there's a drive shaft support. And then underneath the cab here, the drive shaft goes from the center support up front to the transmission where there's another U-joint. So I'm going to start out by measuring the angles of the drive shafts, and I'm going to start with the front drive shaft. And what I've done here is I've sort of eyeballed it to try to get this to line up as closely as possible with the transmission. So I'm going to use my magnetic protractor here, and the precision of this is good enough that I can get to within about half a degree. Now this is just about three degrees. And without moving the front half, I'm going to go measure the rear half of the drive shaft. So the back part of the drive shaft is just about 8 degrees. Now to measure the angle of the differential, I actually have to remove the drive shaft off of this so that I can measure the flat surface on the yoke here. These just come off with some 8 millimeter bolts. Theoretically. Oh. There we go. They're actually in pretty good shape, but U-joints are not expensive and it's not a bad idea to replace it while I have it off. Actually, the seal here is uh, pretty cracked, so yeah, I think I'm going to replace these. And I'm going to use this little piece of scrap metal here to sort of bridge the gap, and I can measure it this way. It helps if it's magnetic. It's a little over six degrees, maybe about six and a quarter degrees. And then for the transmission, we'll just throw it on here. And this is actually about five and a half degrees. All right, with all the angles measured, I went ahead and drew up this little diagram. And we have the transmission, we have the first and second drive shaft segments, and then the differential back here. So the first joint has a 2.5 degree angle, the second joint has a five degree angle, and the last joint has a 1.75 degree angle. Now looking at this drawing, there are two things that I want to resolve. The first is the angle of this joint right here, which is 5 degrees. 5 degrees is right at the limit of what is acceptable given the RPM of this drive shaft, but I'd prefer to decrease the angle. The second issue has to do with the angle of the transmission and the differential. As you can see, at 5.5 degrees and 6.25 degrees, they're 3 quarters of a degree off, and I'd like them to be parallel. Now if we switch to this image right here, this shows what I'd like to do. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the differential parallel to the transmission, and I'm going to do that by adding in a shim in between the rear axle and the leaf spring. It'll be a small wedge-shaped shim, and it'll bring the differential from here down this way just a little bit. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the mounting location of the center drive shaft support so that the angle of this joint in between the transmission and the first drive shaft segment is zero degrees. That will essentially rotate the angle of this drive shaft segment down by about two and a half degrees. Once I've done that, the transmission and the first drive shaft segment will be parallel to the differential. That'll result in the angle of this joint and this joint being equal and opposite. The reason why that's important is because U joints are not constant velocity joints. If the transmission is turning at a constant velocity, if this joint has a zero degree angle, that means this shaft will also be turning at a constant velocity. However, if this joint is a non-zero degree angle, that means that this shaft will not be turning at a constant velocity. As the shaft rotates, it'll actually speed up and slow down throughout its rotation. 
If the rear differential were to be driven at a non-constant velocity, that'll cause vibrations and, if it's bad enough, it could even cause premature wear and damage. Luckily, the way U-joints work is that if you have two joints that have equal and opposite angles, and if they're phased correctly, like these will be, the second joint will actually cancel out the changes in velocity that were caused by the first joint, which will result in the rear differential being driven at a constant velocity, the same velocity as the transmission and the first drive shaft segment. All right, so this is the shim that I'm gonna install. This is actually a one half degree shim, and the thick bit is on this end, and the skinny bit is on this end, so I'm gonna install the thick bit towards the bottom since I want to angle the pinion downwards a little bit. So to do that, I'm just gonna remove these U-bolts here. Uh, we'll lift the frame up, and then this shim is gonna go underneath the leaf spring, but on top of the axle. And then when I'm ready to reassemble it, I have some brand new U-bolts right here. All right, we're gonna try out the three quarter inch impact with an inch and 3 16 socket to get these bad boys off. Yeah, it won't budge. I'm just gonna cut the U-bolts off. All right, well, we'll try cutting these from the top. These are under a lot of tension, so it should be interesting when they break through. All right. That's about what I expected. All right, with this gap in between the spring and the axle, I can just throw this thing in here. The dimensions of this are exactly right, the width and the length of it, so that I just line it up on this perch thing, and then I can lower this back down. It looks like it's a little bit caught. All right, I'm gonna start out with this on low power just to try to get them on evenly. The ones on the back especially need to be tightened up a lot more than the front ones. And even that isn't enough. So these are supposed to be tightened up somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 foot pounds. So I'm gonna use the only torque wrench I have that goes that high. Click, 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 click. Now the next thing to do is to relocate this center drive shaft support so that the front drive shaft segment is parallel to the transmission. Now to determine how far down to move it, imagine an isosceles triangle. For those of you who haven't done geometry in a little while, an isosceles triangle is one where two of the sides are equal. So imagine an isosceles triangle where the two equal sides are the distance from the transmission U-joint to the center drive shaft support. The angle between those two sides is two and a half degrees, which is the amount that we need to rotate the front drive shaft segment down in order for it to be parallel to the transmission. Now the length of the side opposite the two and a half degree angle is the distance that we need to move the center drive shaft support down. And that happens to be 1.35 inches. Rather than actually modifying this mount, I'm just gonna build a spacer instead that accomplishes the same goal. Let's head to the shop and do some fabric cobbling. So I'm going to make this spacer out of some flat bar that I cut up. So I have two pieces here, which are going to go approximately like this. And I cut a bunch of pieces of flat bar up to the exact length that I'm going to be moving it. And they're going to go kind of like this. 
and that's going to get me to space it out correctly. So simple as that, let's weld it up. Got a nice magnetic square, this is going to help me weld these on at 90 degrees. Frankly, I don't think it's going to be possible to get these bolts in here. Oh, actually, no, maybe it is. I'll get one of the bolts in. Can I get the other bolt in? Mm, no, not really. So I'm going to install these bolts before I weld this up. Not my prettiest welds, but it'll hold just fine. Well, I think I'm going to install this thing the easy way. Nice. Now I can go ahead and measure the very front part of the drive shaft and see how long the new drive shaft needs to be. I'm going to measure the distance from the center of the U-joint right here to this flat surface on the transmission. There's a flange that bolts onto the transmission here and holds a U-joint, and then I should be able to figure out the distance from here to the U-joint itself, and then factor that in to figure out if the new drive shaft needs to be longer or shorter than this one. And it looks like it is about three and three eighths of an inch. When I bought the transmission, I was lucky enough to get one of these along with it. They just cut the drive shaft off there. Uh, but this is the flange that goes on the back of it. And it looks like it's exactly two inches. So I'd say that the new drive shaft needs to be about an inch and three eighths longer than the old drive shaft. All right, I got the drive shaft loaded up in the truck and I'm gonna head over to the drive shaft shop and see if they can work some magic for me. And of course, it decided to start snowing and sleeting out. Gotta love that crazy March weather. The next day. All right, I just got the drive shaft back from the drivetrain shop, and it cost me about $340, and they did the work in less than a day. And look at it, they did a great job. So what they did is they retubed the front of the drive shaft, and they basically extended it a little bit. And then they also got me this flange here, which will bolt right up to the transmission. The reason why we needed a new flange is because previously the transmission joint was a Spicer 1480, but we decided to make it match the rest of the drive shaft, so we used a Spicer 1410 U-joint instead. At the same time, they also installed a new U-joint up here, which is a non-greasable one, which is my personal preference, because honestly, it's really hard to get a grease gun in to grease these things, so we're just better off having one that's sealed for life and doesn't need to be greased. They also balanced the whole shaft, so I should be good there. Now, before I install this, I just want to do one thing, and that is replace the U-joint at the differential. All right, so first to remove the old joint, we have to get some pliers in here and remove these snap rings. Hopefully they'll just come out like this. And it broke, that's not too uncommon. And we could try using a chisel to get this out the rest of the way. And we can also use the chisel to break it off too. Since this thing has given me such a hard time, I'm gonna give the cap here a good whack with a hammer to try to open this up a little bit and hopefully free this up. There it is. And this one's spinning freely now. Nice. Now this side is gonna be pretty tight because I whacked it from the other end. So this one I'm gonna wanna give a few good whacks on this side to loosen it up. All right, we'll see if we can get this out now. Oh yeah, oh my goodness. There it is. And now I'm gonna use a nice big socket to bang on the yoke. I think the diameter of this thing is 1.188 inches. So an inch and a quarter socket will fit just fine over this. We're making progress. And you basically keep banging it until you can remove the bearing cap, like so. And then we'll flip it over. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side until we can remove this bearing cap. A few moments later. 
with that cap removed. Needles fall everywhere, but we can pull this out like so. Now, before you install the new U-joint, uh, there are a couple things you want to do. Number one, take a pick or something and run it through the groove where the snap ring goes just to clean it out, make sure there's no junk in there. And then number two, look for any burrs on, especially on the inside of these. And if you find anything, run a file over it and just kind of file them down because you don't want anything sticking out. The new joint is just a new Spicer 1410. Got a ton of new snap rings for it. And it is the Lifetime series that has no grease fitting. Now to install it, you're gonna to have to remove a couple of these bearing caps. Just pull them out carefully, set them aside. They also say that you wanna put the cap onto the exact part of the U-joint that it came off of. And the reason for that is because it has the exact right amount of grease and that if you put it back on the wrong one, it might have the wrong amount of grease and fail possibly. It's probably not that big of a deal, but I'm not gonna take any chances. And then you can slip these in, just like how you removed the old one. Pop it back on, and now we can bang this in place. You wanna use a socket that's big enough to bang around the outside of it. You can actually probably use a hammer too, but we'll just go with a socket. That's a lot less likely to damage it. So that pushed it just below the snap ring groove. Nice. And then just make sure it's seated all the way in, which it is. Now I can flip it over and do the other side. Great, so let's get this thing installed in the vehicle. Nice, looks like they ordered the right flange. Throw a lock washer on there. Well, there it is. I got the drive shaft installed and it fits great. I went ahead and remeasured all of the angles of the U-joints and the very front joint at the transmission ended up being a quarter of a degree. The front segment of the drive shaft ended up being five and a quarter degrees instead of five and a half degrees. I can add some shims to lower it the last quarter of a degree if I so desire, but as of right now, I think I'm gonna leave it as is. The joint here in the middle ended up being one degree and then the joint at the pinion is three quarters of a degree. I think those angles are pretty good and I'm gonna see very low vibration, but of course, we'll find out when we do drive it. As for the U-joint in the front, because the angle is only a quarter of a degree, it is possible that I might see some premature U-joint wear, but I'm not really too concerned about it. Number one, it'll be years before that actually happens. And number two, I do check it regularly and it's easy and cheap to replace. I think the next thing I'm gonna work on is installing this vehicle's custom interior. We need to install a new carpet, a custom headliner, sound installation, and a modern sound system. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below because I love to hear from you guys.